Hello, this is Casper Anderson, and welcome back to another Braco tutorial. Uh, again, sorry, oh, sorry, just making a bit noisier. Right, sorry for the long delay with my videos, but I've had so much work to do, and also I actually decided not to make more videos at the time because not many people were viewing them, so I thought it, it was a bit of a waste of time. But now a lot of people are viewing them, and uh, I'm getting some mails as well about topics people want covered. So I'm going to start again to make some more videos and try and cover cover them all for you. Uh, in this one, uh, a user asked if they could please uh, have a video, or at least if I could try and explain to them how to install Umbraco in WebMatrix. So I'll go through that now. It's extremely simple. So we're going to need WebMatrix, of course. If you can't, if you don't have it, then go and download it. It's uh, free. And secondly, we're going to need the, the um, Microsoft Management Studio, uh, yeah, SQL Server Management Studio. So let's open WebMatrix. There you go. We want to create new and then app gallery. We'll just wait for that to load. And we want to have Umbraco CMS. We can name that anything like my t uh, test site. I mean, we could we could download or we could install a whole load of different frameworks and all that stuff here. But uh, we'll be using Umbraco today. Let's go next. And uh, yep, next. Oh, okay. Never mind. To site two then. Alright, here's the uh, database we want to use. If you're going to be just playing around with Umbraco and trying out a few things, I'd recommend just using the SQL Server Compact Edition as uh, is highlighted. Um, but that will be, I don't know if you can actually deploy it. Uh, you, I think you can to a live server, but I'd not recommend it. Also, because if you have a Compact Edition, uh, there are some extensions uh, like what, what's it called? Newcomers that won't work. So I'd definitely just go for the normal SQL Server. And here you need to write your administrator username and password, and that's not your computer's username and password. That's what you use to log into your uh, SQL Express server, the local one. Here is my name, and then my username is uh, SA, which I think is server administrator. And then I have a long password for that, which I won't show. We'll press next, and then there's all this stuff, and we'll press uh, I accept. There we go, and now it will we'll be installing on Braco. We'll just wait for that. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. Okay, and here are some things to note. There's the database username, the ba uh, database uh, sorry, the, da the database's name, the database's username, and the database's password. So let's copy usernames and password. So let's open up a new uh, notepad here in a minute. I think we could actually just pop it in here. Yep, there we go. So I popped it into uh, this one. I'm just going to move it over to my second monitor so you won't be distracted. Click OK. And now we'll be installing at localhost. But we'll be installing the database inside here. So just refresh a minute. We'll see we have a bracket 159. Perfect. So full name will be Casper Anderson. Email casper.anderson.com. And password 1234. Don't need more of those. I'll just customize, and we'll have we have an SQL server. So there's the server. The server name is if we go back into this uh, management studio, we can right click here and go to properties, and then what you see in the dialog box here at the top. This for me is Casper 6060 backwards slash SQL Express. That is the name we want. Took me a bit of time to figure this out. We're putting that, that into here. The database name we had already been given over here, so that would be Umbraco 159. There we go. Then the database username would be Umbraco user 159. And the password is a long one, long weird one here. There we go. Press continue. We'll just say, uh, do you want Google to, yes, yeah, you'll sure, save password. And then no thanks. And then that's actually the install done. How easy was that? But of course, personally, I still like to use NuGet to download Umbraco via Visual Studio and keep all my projects in there. But this is certainly one way to do it as well. I saw one user would really like to do it this way for something about school, I think. So uh, that's, that's, this is the way to do it. And then the great thing is you can also start up NuGet here and go check out some stuff. Uh, there we go. There's a whole load of stuff here. Probably also find Umbraco here, actually, if, uh, if we're lucky. Let's see a minute. It takes a bit of time to load, sadly.
There we go. Um, yeah, there's a whole load of them back home, but I wouldn't go doing it this way anyway. But what we can do, uh, hold on, let's just close a minute. We can press Visual Studio, and that will launch Visual Studio. I no, don't know why it's saying that. I don't use Visual Studio 2010, I use 2014. That's, uh, I think it was either it's 2014 or 2012. Okay, well, if yours is properly configured, mine is configured to use 2010 for some reason. I probably have two conflicting installs running. Then, uh, yeah, you can use that. But uh, the site admin is quite nice. That will open up your Embraco in the back end, so you don't have to go to your site's front end and write slash Embraco. You could just uh, close that down, press site admin, and it'll take you directly to the login screen. So anyway, that's standard Embraco, and uh, now we're back in, and uh, we're ready to do all the content that we want to. So, uh, yep, that was a very short video for today, but uh, now I've covered that topic and hopefully that will clear up any confusion people might have had about this topic. So, again, thanks a lot, guys, for uh, giving me all this feedback. Uh, last I checked, my, one of my videos, uh, the th I think it was the first one, has reached almost 2,000 views, so I think that's absolutely insane. I uh, love it, and uh, the more the better. So, yeah, thanks for this time. I'll see you in the next video, which I'll be making now.